we will try to understand again the process of getting the surface tension of water by the second method that is jeggers method here also we are going to use the rise in the liquid inside capillary but the process will be different to get the pressure difference is the process will be a bit different from the first one so let us try to find the surface tension of water with the help of jeggers method okay so let us try to understand the instrument in the instrument there is a tank containing water and the water from this tank goes to this wolf bottle this wolf bottle is having two openings one is connected to the tank so when we open this valve when this valve is open the water comes inside the wolf bottle and the second point of the wolf bottle it goes to this pipe this pipe is connected number 1 to this manometer tube and number 2 it is connected to this capillary tube to both this so whenever the water is going to come from this tank inside this wolf bottle the level of the water in the bottle is going to rise because of that that pressure difference will be created that pressure difference is transmitted through this pipe to manometer as well as to the capillary tube means whatever pressure is being transferred that can be measured with the help of this capillary tube and uh, sorry manometer tube and the same pressure is applied in the capillary so as we know whenever the water the capillary is dipped inside the water because of less pressure difference inside capillary the level of liquid rises inside capillary so we will try to apply that much of pressure so that the excess pressure is nullified and the water the the water inside this capillary it comes out in the form of bubble so that is the instrument obviously this is the manometer tube the two arms are there the difference between the level of the liquid inside these two arm is going to indicate the the pressure difference applied the same pressure it is applied to the capillary it pushes the level of liquid inside the capillary tube in the downward direction we adjust the pressure in such a way that the liquid comes out in the form of bubble from this capillary tube next arrangement because we have to take readings for the capillary tube depth of capillary tube different depth of capillary tube inside the liquid this is the capillary tube dipped inside the liquid this is the upper level of the liquid so we have to take the reading for different values of depth of this capillary tube inside the liquid for this here is an arrangement you can see that the beaker has kept on a table the level of table can be increased or decreased with the help of this screw arrangement see with this you can increase or decrease the level of the table i am lowering down the table means the depth of the capillary inside the liquid is decreasing suppose i rotate it in this way i am increasing the depth of the capillary tube inside the liquid so in this we in this way we adjust the height uh, or the depth of the capillary tube inside the uh, beaker now to perform the experiment you can see we are having this wolf bottle we have kept the level of water inside the wolf bottle uh, in this minimum level this much so that whenever we push the cork the inner copper tube should be dipped inside this water so that is the precaution uh, about this wolf bottle i have kept this knob open and now keep keeping the water level minimum water level inside the wolf bottle i am going to tight this cork by pushing this cork i can make it air tight in this way this is now air tight second thing here i have to insert the beaker containing water so i put this beaker in this way slowly and when i put this beaker you can see that the uh, 
capillary tube is not dipped inside water. So slowly I have to move this beaker in the upward direction and I have to make the level of the liquid such that the uh, capillary tube is dipped inside the liquid. Suppose I want to take certain readings say 6 or 7 readings. So I make the depth of the capillary inside the water level in such a way that I can get 4 to 6 reading. So because of that let me rotate this lower screw and increase the level of the water by pushing the uh, beaker in the upward direction. Now you can see that the tube is getting inserted inside the liquid. Now you can see the level of liquid is above this the, the, the lower level of the capillary tube. This is capillary tube, position of capillary tube and this is the level of liquid. This is level of liquid. So I am raising the level in such a way that the tube is dipped for at least 4.5 to 5 centimeter. So I go on moving it until I reach the water level at a level 4 to 5 centimeter above the capillary tube. So in this way I am going to move it to you can see here the capillary tubes level is at around 10.1 centimeter or 10 centimeter. So obviously I have to keep the upper level of the liquid around, 50, uh, around say 15 centimeter so that the difference becomes of 5 centimeter. Now you can see the level of water, water level as at 5 centimeter and this lower level of the minus uh, that is the capillary that is at say 10 centimeter. So the difference is equal to 5 centimeter. The level of liquid is at 5 centimeter and I will show you the level of the capillary inside is at 10 centimeter level. This is the 10 centimeter point. Here it, it is the level of the capillary which is at 10 centimeter. So the difference becomes equal to 5 centimeter. Now we do one thing. We make this uh, valve off in the off position. We pour water in the tube, we pour water in the tube in this way so that tube is now filled. This is airtight and now we will slowly open this valve, slowly, gradually we are going to open the valve and while opening the valve we are going to see what happens here. You can see this is the level of meniscus which is same and in the beaker there is no uh, incident, no, 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 nothing taking place. Now we go on increasing this valve, we go on opening the valve and while we are opening the wall, we can see that the difference in the manometer is increasing and it is gradually, we gradually open it very slowly because we want that in the bubble should come out say in 3 to 4 seconds, one bubble. Now you can see the bubble is coming out of the beaker and manometer is showing a definite reading. At this position, when the bubble comes this slowly out of this beaker, we take reading of the manometer. So to take reading of the manometer, now I am showing, this is the upper limb, upper limb of the, of the manometer. You can see it, Anna, the level, the maximum level that you have to take and the maximum level is around 22.6. 22.6 and you have to take the reading of the 
the right hand side manometer and in this you can see the reading reading is around say 16.5 uh, centimeter so there it is 22 this reading is around 22.5 and the reading here is around 16.5 so the difference becomes equal to approximately 5 centimeter in this way we gradually we gradually decrease the level of this liquid and for each and everything each and every level i take the reading of this manometer difference this manometer difference is capital h and the 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 level of the uh, this uh, capillary tube inside this beaker this the depth of the capillary tube inside this beaker this is small h so we take reading of capital h from this manometer and the small h from this beaker's uh, level of water in this way we go on taking reading say four five or six readings and we calculate the value of h minus h now see this is the reading taken and this is the observation for the pressure difference h in the manometer capital h and depth of capillary inside liquid that is small h so we have taken say eight readings depth of capillary energy initially was four centimeter the left limb position was 22 right limb position was 17 so the difference was equal to 22 minus 17 that is equal to 5 now i have to calculate h minus h so capital h is 5 the small h is 4 so the difference 5 minus 4 is equal to 1 similarly in the second reading i have reduced the depth of the capillary inside the liquid to 3.5 the left limb position was 21.8 right limb position was 17.3 so the difference becomes equal to 4.5 so to calculate h minus h 4.5 minus 3.5 the value becomes equal to 1 reducing the uh, liquid le level of uh, capillary tube inside liquid to 3 2.6 2.1 1.6 1.1 1 .1 and 0.6 i have taken the right limb and left limb position to get different values of h and ultimately I have calculated the H minus H for this experiment. Second reading which we have taken is nothing but the bore of the capillary which we have already discussed in surface tension by capillarized method. Here I am just showing the readings taken. This is the observation for inner bore radius of the capillary tube. So one reading I have taken this is the micro uh, microscope focused at left edge right edge top edge and bottom edge for left edge this is the main scale reading circular scale reading so the total reading is 3.601 right edge 3.3 main scale 82 circular scale so 3.382 is the uh, uh, right edge total reading so when i subtract this left the right edge reading from this left edge what i find is the horizontal diameter so this is horizontal diameter which is equal to 0.219 centimeter similarly i have taken the top edge reading to be equal to 4.339 and the bottom edge reading to be 4.581 the difference between 4.581 and 4.339 gives me the radius that is the vertical radius of the bore of the capillary tube to be equal to 0.242 Taking the average of 0.219 and 0.242, I get 0.2305. When I divide this by 2, what I get? This is the average diameter. Obviously, this average diameter, when divided by 2, gives me the average radius of the capillary tube. So, this is the radius of the capillary tube. Now, see the calculation. The formula for calcul calculation of surface tension T is equal to H minus H multiplied by R multiplied by G divided by 2. R is the radius of the capillary tube. H minus H is the first observation. We have to take the mean of that. So we get mean H minus H that is to be kept here. G is the acceleration due to gravity. So I put the value T is equal to as we have calculated H minus H the average H minus H is point. Uh, 0963 uh, and sorry the 
एच माइनस एच इज बेसिकली जीरो पॉइंट नाइन सिक्स थ्री मल्टीप्लाइड बाय जीरो पॉइंट वन वन फाइव दिस इज द रेडियस ऑफ द कैपलर ट्यूब मल्टीप्लाइड बाय नाइन एट्टी द स्टैंडर्ड वैल्यू ऑफ द एक्सेलरेशन ड्यू टू ग्रेविटी केप्ट इन सी जी एस यूनिट बिकॉज ऑल अदर क्वान्टिटीज आर इन सेंटीमीटर डिवाइडेड बाय टू सो टी बिकम्स इक्वल टू वन जीरो एट पॉइंट फाइव थ्री डिवाइडेड बाय टू और इट बिकम्स इक्वल टू फिफ्टी फोर पॉइंट टू सिक्स डाइन्स पर सेंटीमीटर सो दैट इज ऑल अबाउट कैलकुलेशन वैन यू गेट द रीडिंग पुट द वैल्यू इन प्रॉपर यूनिट एंड गेट द रिजल्ट देन यूर एक्सपेरिमेंट इज कंप्लीट नाउ यू कैन राइट द रिजल्ट यस नाउ द प्रॉब्लम इज वैन वी कैलकुलेटेड द सर्फेस टेंशन विद द हेल्प ऑफ capillarized method and now we have calculated it with the help of zegers method you can see there is a difference there we uh, got around 63 or 64 dynes per centimeter which was more nearer to the actual value here it is 54 which is a bit uh, having more errors in it so we can discuss it uh, in the class that what should be the cause of this difference so that's all in this video i think you have understood the jaggers method quite well and you can perform it without any help now